Stacy, the sewing teacher, and apparently I just can't English today. I'm sorry ahead of time. So this is a casserole carrier. It has no dowels. Um, it is a 100% cotton, which I recommend for this project because if you're going to be putting very hot materials in this, you want it to not melt. Um, it ha it collapses very, very flat, and it's a very flat thing when you're done sewing it. Um, it's basically two rectangles for the bottom and top, um, two more long rectangles for handles, and then Velcro. Um, you can have little additions to this, like I've done, um, such as having a little place holder for any utensils. Um, I also did not sew it 100%. Are you okay, Jarvis? Hey, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Miscalculated jump. Oh, are we gonna get me now? Maybe? Okay. So this also has, um, on the very, very bottom, a hole. I chose not to sew this shut so that you could put napkins and such underneath it if you wanted to. Um, because, you know, more than one use for everything. And then it just collapses closed. I am not going to model this with something in it because that would be a bit hard for me to do and balance and everything. So that is the project that we are working on today. Um, this is really great for a housewarming gift. Or if you're going to be taking like a casserole or something in a like large baking dish elsewhere and you don't want to risk like burning yourself but also keeping it warm. This does have Insulbrite specific batting in it. <laughs> I'm tempting the kitten with the handle you have no idea right now. <laughs> so this is a very good gift or for something for your house. Um, the only thing that I would recommend is having a darker fabric on the inside where it might get uh, food contaminants on it. So this is going to be a repeating clip for all four of the November videos. Tools, tools, tools. Um, big thing to have is a rotary cutter, a rotary cutter, a cutting mat, and a ruler. This will help make straight lines easy. It will help make all of your square, rectangular, long pieces so much easier to cut. So. Um, these are actually the same ones from the library because familiarity. Um, when you use a rotary cutter, it does have a blade. This is the guard up. This is the guard down. Do not ever put this down with the guard down. So always have the guard up. Do not ever put your fingers in the way of this. It is sharp. It is basically like a super fancy pizza cutter, except for fabric. So I can cut through many layers of fabric with this as long as it's sharp. Uh, when it gets dull, you can either, uh, it will probably get dull in spots, and you can either replace the blade or there are sharpeners for specific blade sizes. Um, highly recommend, if you are going to do this, to invest in a set of these. I think this was anywhere between $11 to $20 for this set on Amazon. Casserole carrier that does not involve wooden dowels. Um, so, I'm not the biggest fan of wooden dowels. Um... Insobrite. This is a special interfacing made to withstand high heats. Um, and to also, it's also great for if you're going to make your own oven mitts. You will need Velcro. Um, the hook and loop fastener, which is the same thing. Um, handles. If you wish to have padding on your handles, this is a loop to attach like a serving spoon to the top. And then you've got your um, crisscross pieces that you will actually have. So the outside I chose to have this prettier fabric, but on the inside where you will, where it would actually be touching the casserole dish, I chose dark brown because in case that casserole dish leaks, this is much more likely to stain than that. So I went ahead and made that discretionary change because I feel like that would. Uh, make something that will last a much longer time um, because I don't know how well the Insubrite washes that I don't want to risk um, like trying to shout something and then finding out that that is not compatible. So for me, I just like having dark colors where there is a possibility of it staining. Um, I've gotten enough complaints about black that I decide brown, dark brown is my um, contrasting color for these projects. 
<laughs> when you complain enough, I change. Trust me. Um, so that's what you'll need for these. Um, the pattern that I'm using will be linked in the description. She does not put all the measurements ahead of time, so you have to go through and find every measurement. I do not have them handy, um, because they're just, they're not numbers I re would remember off the top of my head, and I didn't write them down because I just cut in sequence of how she had it, but without the sewing portions in between. So, I am going off of a pattern, um, we'll see if I make any changes to how she's written it, but I will let you know for a second that in the beginning of this uh, pattern it does not say that you need flannel or batting so I got a little further in and I was like oh I need flannel or batting for the padded hmm so I did have some leftover cotton batting from the centerpiece so I went ahead and cut these two pieces out this is just going to be sandwiched together so that right sides are together and then just sew on the long sides I'm gonna go ahead and do that but remember, people, if you're going to make a pattern, include everything. It's not included on my list of materials, so this is the color I got. So this is going to be sandwiched in between these. It's going to be this on bottom, this on top, and then this on top of that. So that when I flip it inside out, you only see the sunflower. Layers, what we're going to have is Insubrite on the bottom. It is not fusible, so you'll have to pin it in place. This and then this. Um, originally the um, designer of this pattern wanted these two pieces to be oversized and then you trim it down, but if you use good pins that shouldn't be an issue. So sew all the way around the two big pieces but leaving a hole to turn it right side out. When it's right side out, top stitch the whole thing, including that hole closed. Alright, so as soon as you've got this these turned right side out, go ahead and top stitch, but leave these seams unfolded in. Go ahead and just stitch them closed. I think the camera will focus. There we go. So just stitch the top so that they're closed and it's easier to insert into the padded handles. Flowers and brown look so great together. Okay, so in order for this next part, you need to kind of fold each of the two big pieces in half and match where those creases and everything meets so that everything is even then you need to put your casserole dish in. So I went ahead because the smaller 30 by 15 piece needs to have the um, handles on the bottom side. So I went ahead and folded those in half, found where like they need to be sewn in order for them to stop right before the top of the casserole dish and pin them in place. So the next step after the handles are in place is to go ahead and put and sew the straps right here. And I have them about three inches from both sides and they're placed evenly. So I'm going to sew them in a square like this so that they are connected. And then we're going to talk about Velcro. Um, after I'm done with that, I'm going to do what I just did, which was put the casserole dish in here. Except I need to also have the batting for that. But it this at least gives me a generalized idea of where my Velcro needs to be. Now, the pattern wanted two inch Velcro, which I didn't have access to, so I have one inch Velcro. What I'm going to do instead of just having a huge solid piece right here is I'm going to take um, like three different pieces and sew them down and have them lengthwise so that if you have a smaller or bigger or whatever casserole dish you're good so you're going to do the same thing on the 12 by 37 piece just figure out kind of where it lays and then just kind of go ahead and just put it on here um it shouldn't be too much of a hassle to put the elastic on um just remember that you need to do it so that it kind of folds like this in the end um, because most of the weight of the bag is going to be on these handles which are on this side. Um, once these are the velcro is sewn on and it's much easier to do that before you connect the two pieces let me tell you. Um, so handles first on the bottom 
Velcro next with these two pieces separately. And then you're just going to stitch right here where they overlap and you're done except for the batting on the handles. So for the most part, this is a very easy build. There's not too much math involved as much as you need to make sure you have a casserole dish handy. This is made after the kitten finally left me alone. <laughs> All I want is to be able to like be sane. Okay. So this is one of the layers. I haven't sewn them together. So here's how I did the Velcro. Because I want it to be able to be adjustable depending on how big your casserole dish is. Of course, this is going to mostly fit like a 10 by 13. But it can also be a little bit taller, a little bit shorter. Um, like if you have something heaping on there versus a flat lid. Like, that is the whole point of this. Okay. So I also sewed this thing. So this is supposed to hold whatever utensil sole or utensils. Um, I made it kind of big because 90% of the time when I'm bringing something, it, it requires tongs. And plus, you can theoretically fit two uh, smaller ones in here, which is sometimes very handy. Okay. And this was just sewn in a rectangle, turned right side out, Velcro on one side, Velcro on the other, and just tacked down. <laughs> Okay, then we have all the work I did on this. So the handles are sewn so that when everything's together, it's not too much taller than the top of the actual dish. Again, the Velcro is done this way. Um, handles, the padded handle portions um, just need to be sewn, flipped, um, this tucked in, and then I sewed the whole thing in a rectangle. Um, they're not terribly padded, like they're not super bulky, um, but again, that depends on your preference and how thick you want everything to be. So, next part. Okay. Is to sew these like this. So, most of what you did for the handles is going to be sewn again. So... First things first, you're going to have to sew right here. Of course, this is not perfect, ready to go. Um, so, fold this this way. Fold this this way. Because most of them ha already have their... Halfway point ready. Uh, that doesn't look right. Maybe it is right. Maybe I'm shorting. I don't see that there's two on one side of the than the other. That would be true. <sighs> well, as long as it works. Um, so I'm going to sew right here. And then I'm going to sew on the other side, or I'm just going to sew this. It will leave a pocket right here, which is fine, because if you need to stash, like, napkins or something, that works. Because um, the major thing is as long as everything is mostly not awkward and fits your casserole dish. Right? Right. That'll fit. Okay. So, as soon as I sew this, we're done. A noise, but Jarvis has decided that I can't sew right now. Um, so if you want to see more videos like this, please like, comment, and subscribe.